I couldn't be happier to bring this edition of Taco Tuesday to you because it's cochinita pibil, you know, that Yucatecan slow cooked pork with achiote and all the fixings. And I'm gonna do it in my new toy, my new big green egg. So the first thing you gotta do is to get the grill set up. Okay, so the, I built a fire in the bottom of it and then I put the plate setter in here. So that's a big ceramic piece and it deflects all of the heat and smoke up around the edges. So I got that in there. We got 300 degrees, which is the temperature that I'm going to cook this at. And we'll put this back down while we prepare the pork for the cochinita pibil. Now, it's typically done whole hog, but obviously you're not going to fit a whole hog in your big green egg or any kind of grill that you have. If you've got something like a kettle grill, you're going to set that up for indirect cooking. And I'll talk more about that just in a second here. But when I'm making smaller amounts of cochinita pibil, I always do it with pork shoulder. Bone in is best. You can make it with the boneless if you want to, but bone in will give you a little bit Bit better flavor. Now the marinade, the classic marinade in the Yucatan Peninsula is made from achiote paste. So yeah, you can make it yourself if you want to. I have written a number of recipes. You can find them online or you can go to a Mexican grocery store and buy achiote paste. This El Yucateco is one that you can readily find. I've been to their factory. They do a great job in the Yucatan and you it'll already have all the condiments mixed with the uh, the achiote seeds, those little brick red, small, hard seeds. Um, it's it's fresher if you make it yourself, but this stuff will really do the job. Okay, so I've opened this package here and I'm going to cut about half of it off or break about half of it off and then break that up into this bowl. Now, the one thing you need to know about achiote is that it stains, okay? You can already see it on my fingers here. It was originally used as a coloring as much as a flavoring for food. It's got a sort of citrusy, earthy flavor to it, and this achote paste has garlic in it and a whole host of spices and herbs. Next thing is to dilute it with sour orange juice. Now, sour oranges are the ones that they make marmalade out of in the West. In Mexico, in the Yucatan Peninsula, they use it for everything. They use it in place of limes. So if you want to approximate that flavor of the sour orange juice in sort of the simplest way, just mix orange and lime juice together. I do two parts lime, one part orange juice, and it gives a little of that orangey flavor to an otherwise very tangy thing, which is what the sour oranges are. They're sour orange, okay? So I'm gonna pour this mixture, this is a three quarters cup of that, into the bowl. And then you just use a fork to kind of mash it all together until you get it as smooth. You could do this in a blender if you wanted to, um, but if you just take a little bit of time to mash it together, it'll work, okay? So I'm not gonna be quite as vigorous at this as I would normally. I would keep working it for a long time until I got it completely smooth in there. But just to save some time, let's go on to the working of the pork here. Okay, so we've got our, our bone-in pork shoulder roast here. And I'm going to get rid of... Oh, I missed one thing over here. Um, I need about a teaspoon of salt in this. So that's how much a teaspoon of salt would be with my pinches. You know, this is a really interesting thing to think about. If you don't want to be grabbing your measuring spoons all the time, then take some pinches. Take a small pinch and a large pinch with your fingers and then just scoop it into a little measuring spoon and see how much your pinch is. I know that if I do three big pinches, I'm going to have a teaspoon of salt. So then I don't have to always be getting those out. Okay, so I've got it's mostly done here. I'm not quite too careful with it but it'll work for the purposes of what we're doing for this video shoot and you put that all over the meat and you're ready to prepare the roasting pan now a lot of people will tell you that it's important to let this sit for overnight or perhaps let it sit for three or four hours that's fine it's going to cook a long time so usually when I'm cooking something for a really long time Unless I am using a dry rub, I will actually um, just put it on and go right straight into the, the grill. Okay, so get all this stuff out of our way so that we're going to have room now for the roasting pan. You could do this in a 9 by 13 baking dish if you want. It'll be a little bit tight, but it's, um, if you don't have a roasting pan, you can think about that. Okay, banana leaves. 
This is a flavor. It's not just a wrapping. So you can find banana leaves in Mexican grocery stores, Asian grocery stores, a lot of really well-stocked sort of specialty grocery stores. They're very easy to find, so don't skip this step. Yes, you can make good cochinito without it, but it just adds so much beautiful flavor to it. So tear these banana leaves up. Now this is what they're gonna look like when you, you usually get them in a one pound package and you kind of unwrap them, unfold them like this. You'll see that on one side of them, they will have um, a very uh, tough edge and that's where it connected to the central stalk there. Um, so I need another big piece of this. So I'm gonna take this one off, off here. I think this piece right here will be the best one. Uh, just cut it apart there. I'm outside and I'm blowing around here. So all of these leaves are kind of uh, going where they want to go. And this will be my piece to go over the top of it. I'm gonna scoop the, the pork now with the achiote into this banana leaf lined roasting pan. And I'm gonna get rid of that one. Okay, so it'll look like that. I wanna make sure to cover it nicely with the banana leaves that I used to line the bottom of the piece. And then I've got my big top piece here to go over that. And then in a sort of classic Yucatan fashion, I'm going to pour some water around it because this is sort of like a roast in a braise okay so all of that now is in there it's ready to go into the grill and cook for what will probably be four to six hours and i'm going to say that if you really want to do this well, you can see the achote still on my hands here. If you really want to do this well, then you should probably put a thermometer in there from time to time to check it, or the one that can stay in there that's got the device on the outside, and I'll show you that here in a second, because that's what I typically use in mine. So we'll open this grill back up. We're still a little bit over 300 degrees. If I were using a kettle grill, I would by this point have pushed the two, the two mounds or pushed the mound of charcoal into two mounds on the side. And I would be setting this right in between them. Um, for this big green egg, I just set it right on the plate setter here, set it down like that. And then we're going to close it up. Oh, first the thermometer probe. So the thermometer on this one stays outside and it's nicely equipped with a little magnet that can go right here on the leg. And then the probe of the thermometer itself, I will just put right into the middle of this like that. That way I can be apprised of the temperature of our pork shoulder roast as it cooks over the next four, five, six hours until it reaches about 200, 210 degrees. That's when I know it's gonna be completely fall apart tender and that's what I'm looking for. I'll come back to you when it's ready. Now, when you're in the Yucatan, they dig a hole in the ground, they put river rocks down in the bottom of that, they build a fire, let the fire burn down until you've got just like red hot rocks at the bottom of it. They'll set their pan of the cochinita directly on those hot rocks. Then they'll cover the whole thing with a piece of corrugated tin, pile dirt on top of that, let that cook for six to eight hours, and then unearth the whole thing. So it's got an earthy element, but it's not unlike cooking it in the big green egg because what we have here is all of this ceramic on the outside of it that holds an even temperature. Of course, it's going hot, it's going in hotter into the hole in the ground, but then there's, it's just the residual heat of all of those rocks that are in there, so the temperature drops. We've kept it at a steady temperature all the way through, and I think we've reached about 200 degrees now for the internal temperature of this beauty. Okay, so I'm gonna set the probe for the thermometer there. And we gotta get rid of all this stuff that's on the top here, wow. Oh, you, I just wish you could smell what I'm smelling right now. Unwrap this guy here. Ah, I see it's steaming and nice. Now what I wanna show you is the texture of a good cochinita when it's ready to pull like that. Ah, look at how tender that is and see how all those are like beautiful juices that have sort of reduced at the bottom of the pan there. Ah, gorgeous stuff. Now that's cochinita pibil. That's the real stuff. 
Okay, let's make a taco out of it because I've got a lot of good stuff here. So it's typically eaten with uh, these pickled red onions. Simplest way to make those if you're kind of in a hurry is to slice up some red onions. Just pour some hot boiling water on them, pour it immediately off, and then add vinegar or lime juice, salt, and you're done. Okay, so that's kind of what I have here is the simple version of that. I'm going to take some of our beautiful cochinita and put that into the tortilla. Now on that will go some pickled red onions. And I've got a bunch of different hot sauces. So same brand, El Yucateco. You can find this in a lot of the Mexican grocery stores. Uh, habaneros are picked either in the green state to make green habanero salsa or the orange state uh, to make the orange one. Or now El Yucateco has come out with what they call the burnt habanero salsa. And this is super popular in the United States. I'm sorry. This is super popular in Mexico just coming into the United States. So I'm going to pour a little bit of it over the top of my taco here. A little goes a long way, so you don't want to put too much of it in there. It's going to be spicy. It's going to be really deliciously robust with the flavor of that cochinita. I can't wait. This is this is like my food. Mm. 